Now, sometimes when you're blogging, you might want to add something from Google Sheets. I share spreadsheets all the time with all the stuff that I work on so that people can see some of the data that I collect. Regardless of your purpose, adding Google Sheets to WordPress is pretty easy. Now, there are a couple of ways that you can add Google Sheets to WordPress. You can use plugins. I prefer to use the coding directly from Google because it doesn't, um, imp you don't have to imp install another plugin, which takes up resources on your website. So from Google Sheets, we just go up to the file. We go to share and we click on publish to web. This will bring up a new window. We are going to embed the sheet into our website. And we can either select the entire document, which will grab all the tabs, or we can select specific tabs. Now for this one, I'm only going to select the channel data tab. And then I'm going to click on publish. What that does is Google will then say, are you sure you want to publish this selection? You click OK, and it will give you the code. From here, you can just copy it. You may hit Control C or right click and copy, and you're good to go. Then you go back to your website of where, click on where you want to put the, the embed. From here, I'm going to put it right underneath this line. And then you can use the plus sign here to add a block. We're going to add an HTML block, custom HTML, and we're going to paste the code directly into it. Now we can hit the preview button and we get a preview of what the sheet will look like on the site. As you notice, it is kind of squished and small. I don't want people to have to worry about scrolling all over the place. So we're going to go back to HTML and we're going to add width equals 100%. Now what that does, oops, what that does is that it will expand the sheet to fill up the entire width of your website. So now when I hit preview, you see it goes all the way across the viewable area, but it's still kind of squished. So we're going to go back to HTML and after width, we're going to put in height equals, and I'm going to make this 600 pixels tall, but that's what that means is 600 pixels. So when we hit preview, now we can see it's still kind of short. Why? Oh, H-E-I-T. <laughs> Make sure you spell height correctly. Now we have it. <laughs> so now you can see it is now 600 pixels high, which is quite a bit of screen size. I probably don't need it that big, so I'll probably just knock it down to 500 and call it good. And then we preview and voila. Now we hit the save draft button here on the top. Once it's saved, we click on the view. We're going to preview in a new tab. And this is what it looks like from the front end. So I'll scroll down to where the sheet is and there it is. Now, when you embed it like this, you don't have to worry about people being able to change any data. It's a read only file. So all they can do is scroll back and forth and check out the information that you're sharing. Now Sheets isn't the only thing that you can embed from Google. You can also do it with Docs and some of the other services that it provides. This way you can share whatever you'd like on your website um, directly from Google. And as long as you're using the embed code that I demonstrated, you don't have to worry about people messing with the code or changing data or writing whatever they want in it. As I said, I use this method quite often. Um, it doesn't take much more off the performance of your website. Uh, actually, it takes less than if you were to use a plugin because the plugin will just load up more resources for the website anytime a visitor visits. Then you can share pretty much anything you want. As I said, the only reason why I don't like using the plugin for this particular purpose is because the code that Google gives you directly works just fine. You don't have to install an additional plugin, which will take up um, drives, resources, or slow your site down if somebody accesses it from abroad. The fewer plugins you have on your website, the smoother it'll run. So this is probably one of the shortest tutorials I've ever made. If you have any more questions about how WordPress uses blocks, leave them in the comments down below. I'll either respond to them directly or make another video about it. Many of you, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. For more videos about blogging, self-publishing, freelance writing, or anything else I cover, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. I think it's going to do it for me today. I'm going to render a video and write a blog post. I'll see you next time.